American College of Medical Genetics is very happy to provide Genetics in Your Health, a series of short videos to explain to you how genes translate into health. For more information on Genetics in Your Health, please visit the American College of Medical Genetics website at www.acmg.net. Welcome to Genetics in Your Health. The American College of Medical Genetics is pleased to provide this short series of patient education videos. If you'd like more information on how genes affect your health, please visit our website at www.acmg.net. I'm delighted to have Judith Bankendorf with us today. Judith is a board-certified genetic counselor and special assistant to the director of the American College of Medical Genetics. Welcome, Judith. Thank you, Kathy. Mm. It's a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> Judith, I'm hearing a lot about family health history and how important it is and why everyone should gather that. What, what is so important about family health history and, and what can, role can it play in helping us? Well, I am thrilled to hear that you're um, hearing so much about family health history because ever since I become a genetic counselor, it's something that we've been talking about and we felt like we've been talking to ourselves. Five years ago, however, the Surgeon General of the United States discovered that family health history was indeed something that should be promulgated as a public health issue. You know, we talk about integrating genetics into health care and translating genes into health, and that's great, but most people don't understand that you cannot do that in isolation. You really have to do it in the context of family history. Genetics is a kind of health care that is, although we talk about personalized medicine and individual health care, it is practiced in the context of the family. And I think there are many, many people who are pet owners and have had the opportunity to buy their pet from a breeder, and they may have a, a pedigree from their pet that goes back many, many generations, yet how many people can really go back in their family tree three generations? Their parents, their grandparents, and maybe their grandparents, and really know health histories, causes of death, age at death, and you know, there's so many cultural taboos. We talk about cancers, tumors, female problems. We need details about this information. It needs to be conveyed to family members, and that's not easy to do. How about if somebody wants to uh, get the conversation started? How can you start asking your family members about this and, and putting together the very important family health history? Think about how does your family communicate? Does your family communicate by email? Does your family get together often? You know, starting the conversation is often the hardest thing. But think about your older relatives because they're not going to be around forever, but yet they often have this information in their heads. And the last thing you want them to do is go to the grave with this information not written down. And in a society where families are so much more mobile and don't all live in the same city, many times we don't know the details of people's health care. So what you want to do is you want to begin writing down, even on a simple piece of paper, information for example about your grandparents. Are they still living? If not, how old were they when they died? And you go through your family of all the relatives who are deceased, their age at death, their cause of death, and then to your living relatives and your close relatives. Um, and there are again on our website some questions about starting the conversation and probably about 10 key very simple questions people can ask about that. And then Find somebody in the family who is willing to record all that information, keep all that information, keep adding to it, because it's a living document. It's not something that you just do once. It's something that gets updated every few years for the family. Um, one of the things that we often hear about is um, discrimination, privacy issues with genetic testing. Tell me what's going on in that area to pr protect people in the public. Well, it's also a very exciting time for families affected with genetic disorders and individuals at risk. For over 10 years now, we've been trying to get legislation passed to protect genetic information in the health insurance and the uh, employment arenas. And I'm very happy to say that after over 10 years of trying, President Bush in May of 2008, signed a bill many know as GINA, which is the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. And that bill does two things. One is that it prohibits health insurance companies for protect, um, from collecting excuse me, um, information about genetic risk status um, or whether a person's ever sought genetic services or genetic family history on an individual um, as a criterion for purchasing um, 
health insurance. And then the other thing is that employers also uh, cannot use that information to discriminate in the workplace or in making hiring decisions. Now, these provisions go into effect for health insurance in May of 2009 and in the employment arena in November of 2009. Judith, this has been extremely informative. I'd like to thank you for taking the time today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. For more information on genetics and your health, please visit the American College of Medical Genetics website at www.acmg.net. Thank you for watching our segment on genetics and your health. For more information on genetics and your health, please visit the American College of Medical Genetics website at www.acmg.net.